And welcome to the Over 40s Fitness Podcast. My name is Tristan Long and thanks for joining me again. I think this is our, uh, episode number 23 and the, uh, the subject of today's uh, podcast is looking after our physical health and body uh, and mind with trekking and hiking. Now, uh, if those of you that are wondering what I'm wearing here, this is a, uh, an expedition pack. In other words, it's a fancy backpack, hiking pack, trekking pack, mountaineering pack, whatever you want to call it. Um, this one was made by a manufacturer called uh, Osprey, who are quite well known in the hiking, trekking, uh, mountaineering world. All right, so let's get rid of this off me. because it, okay, it doesn't weigh a lot. It's got nothing in it at the moment. And here it is. It's quite a bit of kit, okay? And it's built around uh, those of you that are going to trek far and wide and be on your feet for a long time and need to carry your, all of your uh, possessions and safety equipment, trekking, climbing, uh, climbing, hiking equipment in it. All right, enough of that. All right, okay, so let's look at it. Um, uh, I've, uh, I've done a lot of walking, trekking, hiking and some climbing uh, myself um, and uh, it takes uh, a certain individual to start uh, trekking or climbing um, but it can take anyone to start walking. So why do we do it? Okay, uh, we're built to walk. Our bodies are designed uh, to get, uh, we're bipedal. Our bodies are designed to get up and walk uh, every single day, morning, afternoon, or evening. Uh, what's interesting though, is how many people don't walk. Um, they, they'll say, oh, I went for a walk last week and it'll, it'll transpire. They walk to the local shop, they walk to buy a newspaper, and that walk could take three, three, five, 10, 15 minutes. And that's not enough uh, to keep uh, our bodies mobile. It simply isn't enough. Yeah. The, um, the thing that we keep hearing and reading about in today's uh, uh, media is the 10,000 step rule. Okay. There's not enough evidence to prove that 10,000 steps is the be all and end all because it isn't. It could be for someone that does nothing, for someone who doesn't go for a walk every day, and that will be your, your average sedentary based person, someone who works in an office, who works in a position where they sat down all day, so they sit down in the house, sit down to have their breakfast, if they have breakfast, and they'll sit down to drive a car or get a bus or a train or a bike to work. They'll get to work uh, and they'll sit down again. Uh, for, uh, you know, and some of them even eat at their desks as well. So that person, he or she could spend all day sitting down. And the only time they stand up is possibly when they have to, if they're cooking dinner or taking a shower. Okay, so let's look at it. The majority of people uh, in today's um, climate don't actually go out and walk. Now there'll be countries um, and even continents um, across the world where a lot of people do actually walk uh, because they haven't got the, um, uh, the, uh, the transport systems we have. They don't come from a, uh, a bloodline, a culture, a history or uh, a geography of sitting down all day. But we're just talking about general people, you and I, general population in the Western world uh, and even the uh, other places. But all right, so why should we walk? That's to uh, keep the blood flowing around our body, okay? Blood flow carries oxygen around the body, and without that, we'd be dead. If we didn't have oxygen carried in blood cells around the body, we'd be dead. All right, so go for a walk. Keep it simple. Uh, I often get asked in person uh, in my line of work, uh, where, should, where, do, where do I start? Well, it's, it, it's not exotic, it's not fancy, don't make it uh, too, too complicated. You start by putting on your shoes or putting on your trainers and opening the front door and walking out. That is where you start. Yeah, it's nothing, uh, nothing too hard to think about. You haven't got to write anything. You haven't got to plan anything. You just open your front door and walk outside. Yeah. Now, if you live in a city centre, then walk through your city centre or a town. Then walk through your town centre. You, you, it might not be uh, ideal because there's not enough trees and forests and hills and whatever. But you are still walking. And actually. If you, if you did your homework and got out and walked, you'd be pleasantly surprised. I've, uh, you know, I have myself in, if you do walk through your town or your city or where you live, um, how quickly you can get to a place of open space, you know, whether it be a, uh, a park, uh, you know, county uh, park, civil park, even a private place like that, or, or a field or woodlands, anything like that. So start. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, when we walk, uh, we have to utilize oxygen. Yeah, our respiratory, upper, uh, upper respiratory system, our circulatory system that carries the blood. We have to utilize our musculoskeletal strength, which is uh, our bones, muscles, ligaments, tendons. We have to utilize our balance, coordination, uh, proprioception, uh, our spatial awareness, vision, sound. All of those things come into, come into play uh, when we walk. All right, so 
Why would, why would we not do that? When it's got all those benefits, it strengthens our ligaments and tendons, it strengthens our body, it's good for our posture, good for blood flow. Um, and uh, recently, well, I say recently, uh, in terms of um, media, uh, it's good for our mind. But we've known that for a long time, but even now, especially after the last three, say three years, uh, we, it, it's kind of reinforced all the time how walking is good. I often see articles, clips, videos on uh, people talking about or, or uh, the benefits of walking and what I'd like to do is actually um, uh, dig deeper into that and see if that individual, if he or she, actually does it rather than they've just cut and pasted something they've seen on the internet on Facebook or LinkedIn or TikTok or Twitter or one of these things because that's probably the norm nowadays. Yep, if we scratch beneath the surface there'll be a lot of people talking about the benefits of walking but they don't actually do it. Yep, okay. Well, that's not the case with me. I actually do it. I do it for a passion, a hobby, to keep myself strong and fit, and I also do it as part of my profession as well with clients. All right. Um, okay, so uh, we're, let's go back to this 10,000 steps a day um, uh, rule. It's not a rule, okay? If you, if you don't walk 1,000 steps a day, and then starting from tomorrow morning or tonight, you walk 1,000 steps a day, you are uh, immediately uh, doing more than you used to. That's just the simple math, okay? It hasn't got to be 10,000. You can walk 7,225 steps a day. And here's, and where's the proof that our mobile phones that are sat in our, our pockets or our, our, our jackets are, are, are factual? Who, who knows that the apps that they put on mobile phones are, are correct, even within 10%? The phone might say, oh, I've walked 10,000 steps. You might have only actually walked 900. The best way is to count them. Yep, count them. Walk from a place from your front door to a, a landmark. It could be a bus stop, it could be a, a car dealership, it could be a building, a tree, a street, a road, a roundabout, anything. And you count how many steps it takes you to get there and of course get back, because you've got to get back. All right, okay. Now that is a fact. You're not relying on your mobile phone to tell you how many steps you've had. There's no proof that they're factual. What it would be a fact is you count them yourself, all right? And if you can't count, uh, I can't help you there. All right, let's look at it. now. Uh, walking, trekking, climbing. All right, now, when we walk, generally, it's on a flat surface. If you go up a hill, technically you're still walking, but you're walking up a hill, so the heart rate goes higher. Uh, you improve, you're you're gonna improve your cardiovascular fitness, the power in your lungs as well, and of course, the power in your upper legs, um, and possibly even the hips as well. So, if you can find a hill, it hasn't gotta be a big, long, steep hill, just a hill of some description, walk up it and walk down it, and your, your, uh, your cardiovascular fitness uh, and your body, the power in your body, the strength in your body will improve, all right, okay? You have to measure it somehow, you've got to measure it so, but of course, when you walk uphill, you've got to walk downhill as well, and if it's a steep hill, um, remember, you're now eccentrically loading, you're coming down the hill, you're putting that weight now on your joints, on your knees, your ankles, your hips, your toes, your heels, anything like that, and even your lower back as well, so start walking, don't start with a pack on your back like that, that pack behind me, uh, is a 80 litre pack and it holds a lot of stuff and I would uh, uh, advise you not to do that. Start with just your body weight. Maybe take a bottle of water or something like that and always keep your mobile phone on you so you've got contact uh, if you need to get picked up or anything like that or you're lost, you can use Google Maps. You should be lost anyhow. All right, now, uh, trekking and hiking, that's when you're gonna essentially go off-road. You're gonna go into fields, you're gonna go into where the mountains are, you're gonna go into uh, countryside, um, and of course, generally with that trekking and hiking, um, there's more ups and downs on different surfaces, on grass, on, uh, on gravel, on shale, anything like that, on different stone, rocky formations. And for those of you that have done a trek, uh, or a hike, sorry, um, and some people call it a climb, if you walk up to the top of um, a mountain, let's call it a mountain, let's say one that we all know in the UK, Snowdonia, um, now, you're not climbing, you're walking, trekking, all right, okay. Uh, if you have to put your hands and feet uh, on the surface for a prolonged period of time, now, you're, and you're going up a vertical, and you might even need equipment to do it, at that point you're climbing. But if you're walking up a steep hill, and it could be, I don't know, a, a, you know, a 13, 15, 16 gradient or more, you're not climbing until you need to put three to four points of contact on it, and that would be both hands and feet, and you might need uh, ice axes, ropes, carabiners, harnesses, hard hat swings, you know, crampons on your feet. That's different, that's actual climbing. So bear in mind, when someone tells you they've been climbing at the weekend, it, it, you know, find out, you ask them. It probably transpires they've actually been walking or trekking or a hike 
all of which are fantastic forms of exercise. And I would advise uh, any of uh, my personal training clients, my sports massage therapy clients, or even those of you that are watching uh, to, yeah, think about it and uh, start. All right, now, uh, there are a few things to take into account when you start walking as well. Um, generally, if you're new to it, um, let someone know where you're going. Yeah, if you're walking up and down the high street, doesn't matter, but generally think to yourself, okay, if you're going off road, if you're gonna drive out to a destination and then start walking, know where you're going, get your bearings, and let somebody know, uh, you know, let your missus, let your wife, <clears throat> your husband, a housemate, a work colleague, someone, next door neighbor even, that, that, where you're going, okay? So just in case your mobile phone loses its, uh, its reception and uh, you go missing, you should go missing. All right, now, take into account whenever you go to, uh, for a walk, you've got to come back. And so if you're new to it, um, just do some research as well and find out that you could come back to your starting point being your house or somewhere, the rendezvous where you've gone, if you could get back without walking. Is there a bus route? Is there a train route? Can you call a cab, an Uber, anything like that? Uh, that happened to me once in the last, say, three years and I got a bus back. That's because I didn't feel too well. So, all right, now the... Um, the cost entry, the entry uh, to walking is close to zero. The only cost is your time, yeah? And if you're you know, watching TV every night, watching TV seven nights a week and watching television and scrolling through you know, social media pages at weekends, you've got time. If you only do a, work, a job that's 40 hours a week, Monday through Friday, you've got time. If you've got three children, two children, one child, you've got time. Get them to walk with you or get someone to look after them. Find a way, don't make up excuses or think of reasons not to walk. It's a natural thing that we should all do. And yet once again, just to, just to go over it again, it's, you'd be surprised how many people don't walk. And they'll come up with a multitude of reasons. Oh, it's raining, uh, it's snowing, uh, there's a tornado, there's a hurricane, there's a forest fire, um, there's some biblical level event of, uh, of, of bad weather. Um, it's too cold, it's too dark, it's too bright, the sun's too bright. That's right, I've heard that or the sun's too hot. We're 96, I think 96 million miles away from the sun and it's, it's too sunny or it's too hot. Uh, I've also heard, oh, there's no one to walk with me. I can't get anyone to walk with me. Now, if you need someone to walk with you and hold your hand, that's different. You might be 95 years of age, fair enough, or even 85. You don't need someone to hold your hand to go for a walk. And when I say hold your hand, I mean both physically and uh, metaphorically. You don't need a shoulder to cry on just to go for a walk down the road. Yeah, so make it fun. Put your, your headphones in, your ear pods on if you want, and listen to some music or listen to a podcast. I listen to music sometimes. I like listening to uh, hip hop, New York hip hop, funk, jazz, soul, uh, movie scores. And for those of you who know me well, I'm a big music fan, so it's a good time to, for me to listen to music or possibly even make a phone call while I'm walking. But generally, if you don't want to do that and you want to hear the birds and all the cars and all the noises and all the rustlings in the trees, then don't put your ear pods in. Don't put your headphones on. All right, in terms of equipment, uh, what you need, it's really, really simple. A pair of trainers or a pair of walking shoes. All right, so let's look at that. You don't need expensive trainers or walking shoes or trekking shoes to start. You can always upgrade to that and level up to that if you need them, depending on what kind of level or how much you're walking. You can go to your local shop or go on an online uh, site, eBay, and buy a second-hand set of walking shoes. As long as they've still got the grip on the bottom and they're, they're reinforced in whichever way, I would say don't spend any more than £30 on a pair of trainers or up to £40 or something like that on a pair of walking shoes. Now, bearing in mind, though, um, different brands and different manufacturers uh, fit people's feet differently as well. You might have a wide foot, narrow foot, long, short. Uh, you might have um, uh, injuries. You might have ankle injuries, heel injuries, toe injuries, knees or hips. So think about that. Get something that's a bit more reinforced and kinder on the, uh, on the feet. Your feet are the only part in contact with the floor when you go walking, trekking, and of course climbing. That's when you bring in your, your hands and feet at the same time. Now, um, it's actually something uh, that uh, I, I undertook in a big way about three years ago. And I was already quite a reasonably active or very active person anyhow, because I played golf for about 18, 19 years, as well as other sports. And as a personal trainer, I was always on my feet anyhow, but I decided to get into it. And if memory serves me right, in, I started it properly in 2020, um, as in going on dedicated uh, walks and, uh, and treks. And I think uh, it was close to something like 
uh, one and a half million uh, steps. Now, going back to what I mentioned earlier on, if my if my phone was incorrect by even ten percent, okay, that you know it, it, it's still a lot. And bearing in mind as well, my phone isn't always in my pocket or in my jacket or on my hip when I'm walking. Anyhow, I, it could be uh, up on the uh, work on uh, a worktop whilst I'm at work, moving around with clients. Anyhow, so it's possibly even more than that. Now, I've got a few knocks and bangs, aches and pains. I've got a little bit of repetitive strain injury uh, to my foot. Uh, I got some little t once in a while. I'd get a little bit of hip hip pain. That was probably from doing so much so quickly as well. Um, and of course, I increased my load by putting on packs. And I started with a pack with something like one kilo, two kilos. And eventually, you know, before I went out overseas on expeditions, I was walking, trekking, and hiking with up to fifteen kilos uh, on my back. And that takes that takes time to learn how to do that correctly. You have to learn. Uh, one second. You have to learn what kind of pack uh, would suit you. So, yeah, there's um there's a lot to choose out there. I would say on a pack, don't spend anything more than 30, 35, 40 pound a game. Yeah, you might find out it's not for you. And uh, to go and spend, you know, up, upwards of 100 pound on an expedition pack or a top grade uh, hiking pack, it, it's not needed. Not unless you call someone, gives you one or you get one, you know, for, uh, cheap off off a uh, used uh, buying site. So, yeah. Um, start low on your budget. Yeah, don't go, don't go and spend a lot of money. The most important part of your apparel, your clothing, when you're out walking, is what's on your feet. It doesn't matter who makes your cap, who makes your t-shirt, who makes your trekking pants. It doesn't matter. No one cares. They do care, or you should care about what goes on your feet. All right. Now, um, I, I, I myself, uh, I, uh, I trekked around uh, England, Lincolnshire, Yorkshire, Derbyshire. Um, I did. Um, uh, the Peak District, umpteen times, uh, and for those of you overseas, that means a lot. I did um, Snowdonia um, and uh, spent a lot of time on my feet, and then eventually I went to the French Pyrenees, uh, the Spanish Pyrenees in winter, uh, and that was a, a real different, uh, a different part of my training. Okay, training outdoors with experts in the snow uh, and ice and the cold, um, and being uh, have some form of discomfort each night because you've got to get up and do it again the next day and your crampons or your snowshoes and your trekking poles and you've got to do it with relatively poor standard sleep and not the same food quality that we'd normally have but that's part of training and then of course you know going around the UK then going around France then going around Spain eventually I went to Nepal in the Himalayas which is possibly the hardest of them all and we know that's a different story uh, an enjoyable story and I suggest that if you've got that time effort resolve need want uh, physical mental and emotional uh, balance and of course the, the funds you should try something like that okay going over to go to Asia uh, North America or Africa one of those continents and and uh, getting on your feet going up there okay so we're, we're now about 18 minutes all right so just to recap this podcast uh, over 40s fitness with me Tristan Lowe is all about looking after our bodies and our and our health all right but most of my um, podcasts will be based on experience observations research with a little bit of a humor once in a while, uh, but that's a matter of opinion. What's a matter of fact is that I'm gonna be here once a week and giving uh, listeners or, or viewers, we're on YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple and Google. Go to one of those channels there, watch the YouTube, subscribe, like and share. Um, if you uh, want to make a comment, I'm all open to your comments, I'd like to hear them. I'm 52 years of age, I've been training since I was 11, so that's what, 40, 41 years of exercise. I'm a fitness professional with a diploma in soft tissue sports massage therapy and a diploma in personal training. I studied in 2008 in Nottingham, 2007, 2008 in Nottingham after years of sports and fitness, studied anatomy and physiology. And actually when I got my qualifications and my certificates, um, that was just the start. You know, getting qualified in anatomy and physiology is just the start of what we do. The real learning comes when we do it as a profession and we do it day after week after month after year i'm now into my second decade i've been training people and looking after bodies for over 15 years in total now working at three establishments and then eventually back in 2010 opening my own establishment of which we'll get to on another podcast all right so today's uh today's um tip is to get up put your trainers on put your walking shoes on go on your own go with a friend go with a family member and uh, start walking the benefits we'll talk about in another video, actual, the, the physiological benefits. We've just touched on them today and uh, I'll leave you with this. So, wanna lose some weight? 
some body weight, excess body weight, some excess body fat and some visceral fat, start walking. Remember, you know, look after your bodies, hydrate all the time, love your friends and family. See you next week. Thanks for watching.